Okay, I will get this started. Um, so uh, I'm John Leung, this is Slavic, and this is uh, Oh, my Richard Pinzo. <laughs> so th this was also done in, in conjunction with the uh, co-chairs of the Refish uh, Forum uh, within the MTF. Uh, quick intro of, of Redfish and then a uh, deeper dive into the models. Uh, we're going to go through, through this fairly quickly. Uh, I assume there will be a lot of Q&A. Uh, one thing I noticed yesterday going through a lot of the sessions was that, uh, one, uh, the CERN has uh, 500 instances of redfish running that they're managing the, the systems on, uh, 500 plus. And I just met with Starling and Starling basically, Starling X, sorry. Uh, and they basically uh, utilize redfish on the bottom end to actually manage their systems. So um, uh, more prevalent here than I thought it, it would be. Okay, so what's uh, redfish manageability? So uh, basically we took, um, we looked at the existing um, standards for manageability and with IPMI. Uh, for those who don't know IPMI, you really don't want to uh, because it's bit mapped. It's, in, it's entire uh, structure is a bunch of bits and the 400 page documentation on it is how to translate these bits and what they actually mean. Uh, Redfish took a different uh, uh, perspective to it and they basically went out to the CSPs and they said, what do you guys want for manageability? And they said, well, you know, if you use our existing tool chain uh, and build manageability at the end of that thing, we will most likely use it. Because right now, we have to specially train these people right in IPMI, and once they're trained, they can't do anything else for our company. So um, we said, what do you use? And they said, well, HTTP, JSON, Python, we're going to, and other programming languages. So that, that's what we did. We built a RESTful version for, for manageability. And so all you need to do management is now being reduced to knowing the URI and uh, understanding what the JSON response is that you, you get back when you do an uh, HTTP request. Okay, so the uh, resource models, uh, so this was originally created by the DMTF, which understands uh, servers very well. You don't understand anything else. Uh, so uh, once we developed the breakfast standard as the HTTP protocol and then how to model it, uh, we went out and partnered with everybody else to explain to us what, uh, how to extend the model to do various other things. So we partnered with uh, the Green Grid and ASHRAE to do uh, uh, power and cooling models. So that's been extended and released. Um, we, knew, we went to SNEA and uh, VME Express to do storage. So now we are uh, in the process of releasing uh, VME uh, over fabric model to, uh, within Redfish to do that. Uh, we've gone to Fabrics. Uh, so uh, the newest Fabrics, CXL and Gen Z and, op uh, and the Open Fabric Alliance all uh, met together and decided to do um, uh, a model for Fabrics. And this is a Fabric model that works uh, from on the platform for CXL all the way to PCIe, all the way to, to any SAS Fabric that we have. So it's a fairly generic model that we're trying to build. And then last, we went to uh, management of, of other domains. So for, um, for the um, uh, OCP, we did for data centers. For the automated factory and process automation, we went to the open group over the OPATH. And then for IoT, uh, PICMIC uh, came to us and said, we'd like to extend this into IoT. So they, they're in the process of doing that. In, in so doing, they've also taken that implementation that we have and then said, our implementation are these tiny little microcontrollers. Uh, so they're re-implementing re it in, in, uh, in assembly, okay? So I mentioned OCP. Um, OCP is a, is a little different in, in, with the other organizations that we had in that the DMTF and, and its partner organizations all describe uh, standards. I call them prescriptive powers because they're trying to define a, a model and a standard which covers as much as they can. The problem with this type of standard is people look at it and they say, do I have to implement all of it? And the answer is no. Uh, but we can't tell you how much of it to implement. That's determined by the um, uh, management domain that you have. So OCP is a, is a management domain of data centers just as uh, the open group whose management domain is the automated factory. So if you go to OCP, OCP will say, oh, uh, yeah, this is a big standard, but all you need to do is implement this small subset in order for, for you to be conformant to OCP 
and provide a base level of functionality, which we call the baseline. So when you go to an OCP platform, they all should support the baseline. You have a common set of manageability. And then depending on what type of platform, whether it be a server or storage and so forth, they can extend that. Um, and these uh, definitions are all defined in a JSON model. And we have a tester which will actually read this JSON model and test conformant implementations to make sure you conform. And that's how we close the cycle of OCP that OCP can now define what, they, what subset of Redfish they need. We have a test fixture um, to test it at the back end so that anyone who comes to OCP and says, I, I got a product and it conforms to this particular profile, they can say, prove it, uh, run this test suite against it and send us the results, okay? Um, so a couple of, of, of related ones, uh, uh, sessions uh, on, on OCP. Uh, one is uh, the introduction to uh, the Open Compute Project, which you all missed because it was at four o'clock yesterday. And uh, tomorrow there's a uh, building a sustainable OpenStack cloud on OCP platforms. And I'll be, I'll be doing the later half of that. Um, this is a, an eye chart, but this basically uh, breaks down the baseline and the so, so server profile. The server profile is an extension of, of the baseline, so you get everything in baseline plus the servers. This just tells you what the use cases are, uh, what you can do with, with Redfish, what it exposes, um, and um, this is what the profile says that we've taken a subset of Redfish. Uh, these are the resources you have to have within the, within the URI path, and these are the things you can go accomplish. And what is in red is uh, what is proposed for version 1.1. Uh, everything you see in black is in version 1.0. That is currently published by um, OCP and as profiles so that as people uh, contribute product, they can test against uh, 1.0. Okay. Um, so a simple interaction. Uh, I tried, I, everyone hopefully knows what JSON is. Uh, it's a bunch of name value pairs. Um, so um, um, the response comes back either as a simple property, it can come back as a complex property, which is properties, uh, property structure with other properties in it. Uh, it can have point to subordinate resources. So these are resources that exist because the main object exists. exists. So uh, processors, memory, uh, storage, they're all subordinate to the system. Um, there are associated resources. So uh, with subordinate resources, if I go and delete the system, all its subordinate resources disappear. With associated resources, they don't. So um, if, uh, if two entities exist and if one deletes, the other remains like um, between uh, the chassis and the system or the storage unit or external storage units, you can, you, can, you can delete the system and external storage units still exist. So the associate resources just point to those that they still exist. And the last is actions. So this is not only a, a read-only thing, you can actually perform actions, the most common one being a system reset. So uh, the system reset actually tells you what the target is. The target says, uh, just do a post. <laughs> post to that target and that system will reset itself. Uh, and not only that, but um, the multiple types of resets. So um, if you look at action info, which is yet another resource, it will tell you um, all the types of properties that you, you can uh, uh, set in, in your post command. So you can post and reset, now becomes hard reset, soft reset, uh, power cycle, you name it. So it, it has all the complexities of, of the different types of resets that you can do upon the system. Okay. So uh, this is a lot. Uh, so every resource in the entire tree has that. Uh, the diagram on the, on the left is exactly how you get there. Uh, so I said you go down to a URI. So the diagram actually tells you exactly what the URI should be. You go to system root, which is um, uh, Redfish v1. Then you go to systems. Then you go to CS1. And, and if you can traverse the uh, solid lines down this tree to exactly know exactly what type of resources exist and what you, what, where you can do gets and posts and so on and forth. And you can patch these. So, um, with all these JSON uh, uh, documents flying around, um, we felt that it was necessary to provide a schema so you explain what it was. So just as XML has XSL, it explains what these uh, name value pairs are within XML. 
Uh, our JSON uh, uses uh, JSON schema to describe the content width of your JSON packet. Uh, and that's so we can connect up to the JSON schema toolchain and auto-generate clients. Um, that was fine until uh, the telco guys came and said, we don't use JSON schema, we use Swagger. We, by the way, we're renaming it OpenAPI. So uh, we also released our schema in OpenAPI and then finally release it in Oasis OData. So all these allow us to connect up with those particular tool chains uh, so you can auto-generate uh, clients on that side. Okay. Uh, there are a number of documents that uh, we also generate directly out of the schema. So uh, most of our documentation for Redfish is auto-generated directly from the schema itself. Uh, we don't write a whole lot. Of, and so uh, we actually have guides that you show you all the resources within Redfish, all the properties and exactly what they are. So they're pure extractions from the schema themselves. And then I think... Uh, I said, I'll leave this to Richard to talk about once we've gotten to um, um, having a machine readable form of, of the schema, what we can do that without, with the types of tools that we can create. Thank you. So um, the DMTF offers a large number of uh, tool repositories. Uh, they're open source software repositories, and they're offered to enable um, software development. Uh, there are four, four different categories of these repositories or tools. Uh, the first is Redfish service simulators. Uh, they, able, they enable clients uh, to run against a simulated Redfish service, sort of like the service you would expect to find on a system that's being managed by Redfish, typically offered um, by a baseboard management controller, also referred to as a BMC. Another category of these tools is, the cli is client-side utilities and libraries. And the purpose of those is, as you would imagine, uh, to expedite client-side development and use of Redfish to make it easier um, for folks to develop and implement uh, management applications that take, take advantage of Redfish uh, richness. Uh, the third, third category is orchestrator support. Um, this enables orchestrators to utilize Redfish as well. And then finally, a very interesting um, group of, of these tools is all, around, all about testing. Testing is very important. Um, and it sort of works its way up the protocol stack. Uh, the first one listed verifies the, the foundational protocol itself, the HTTP exchange between the client and the Redfish service. Uh, the second one can be used to actually verify conformance with the Redfish schemas. So the resources served up by the service ensure that they actually conform with the schemas as published by the DMTF. And then finally, the third one is to test conformance against a prescriptive profile. And such a profile can be used to describe the domains that John just described, such as um, OCP, um, um, IOT, those kinds of things. So you can come up with a profile that describes that and then test to ensure that an implementation supports what that domain requires. On the right side, uh, I've created a drawing uh, that groups all these different tools um, by category. It's basically a sampling of the tools that the DMTF and others offer uh, for your use. Um, the, the legend is that those in black are offered by the DMTF, and those in green are offered by um, other repositories. Uh, the DMTF's uh, repositories are hosted on GitHub under the DMTF namespace. Let's, uh, dr let's drill down a little bit into uh, you know, looking at the Redfish interface and specifically how it's used by the Open Infrastructure, formerly OpenStack Ironic project, which, as I, I believe many of you know, is used to manage bare metal. So Ironic uh, uses Redfish. Um, it's been available for a number of years. It's been enhanced and greatly improved, and it's quite advanced now. And we're hearing that a lot of um, organizations are adopting it. Um, on the left, I've, I've got a drawing there 
that uh, depicts the ironic service and specifically the conductor. The ironic conductor um, hosts drivers, or they're also called hardware types. Uh, on the left-hand side is the tried and true IPMI driver that John was talking about earlier. Um, on, a, on the right is the more modern Redfish driver. And what's depicted is that the Redfish driver within the conductor uses a client-side library that was mentioned on the previous slide called Sushi. Um, and no, it's not fish. Um, it's actually a Redfish uh, client library. So Sushi um, is, is actually falls under the governance of the I Ironic project. Um, so the Ironic conductor and its drivers, it, you, they use um, Sushi, um, but others can use it as well um, if it suits their needs. Um, the primary purpose though, of Sushi is to be a sort of tailored client uh, that meets the requirements of Ironic and its drivers. So it's not, not meant to be a general purpose library. The goal is not to implement everything, but rather implement what's needed as it's needed. You know, however, it's open source, and if you find it helpful, uh, we welcome you know, contributions to it to enhance its functionality. Um, so finally, um, at the bottom of the stack there, um, Sushi will interact with the Redfish interface implementation um, by a Redfish service, again, typically offered by a BMC. So on the right there, I've got a table which sort of drills down into the details of the Redfish driver, a view of the Redfish driver. Um, the left-hand column lists, lists the ironic driver interfaces that any driver could support. Um, the Redfish driver, just like other drivers, um, supports a number of those different class, classes or categories of interfaces. Um, I've, I've got them listed, and their functionality is pretty straightforward, but we can walk through it real quickly. Um, those that support or actually utilize Redfish um, will have a checkbox or an X in the uh, via sushi column on the right-hand side of the diagram. So the first one that, that uses it is the BIOS interface implementation. It uses Redfish to manage the BIOS settings on a system. So I'm not referring to the actual firmware, not referring to the BIOS firmware, but rather the settings, the knobs that that firmware offers for configuring the server. Things like um, whether or not um, it uh, is, it supports, you know, whether or not the, the server will support hypervisors um, and that kind of thing. So the uh, next one that uses uh, Redfish is um, a boot interface, uh, which uses virtual media um, to boot a deployment or cleaning RAM disk and also user instances on the bare metal itself. Skipping forward past a couple of others that don't use Redfish is the inspect interface. Um, that can be used to discover capabilities of the server, including the number of CPUs, memory, and local storage. Moving on, management sort of a catch-all of things that you know, we didn't really have another bin to throw them in, but its primary use is to manage the boot devices, the boot mode, secure boot, sensors, uh, and indicators on the system. Uh, the next is power. It's pretty straightforward, managing the power state of the system and also the ability to reboot a system. Um, a more advanced feature is the ability to manage your RAID. You can apply a configuration, create a configuration, and delete it. And that all uses now Redfish to affect that on the actual system that's being managed. And then finally, there's um, sort of the escape hatch um, called Vendor. And that offers up vendor and driver-specific capabilities. Slavik? Thank you. Thank you. So Redfish uh, is the management standard which main goal is to define the prescriptive models for the uh, IT industry. It has been introduced uh, in 2013 as a simple simpler replacement for the IPMI compute server management protocol with the definition and management of the compute, uh, logical compute node and the physical uh, FRU management with some parts as um, was mentioned already implemented in, uh, uh, in OpenStack. 
Uh, but through years of work and development, it becomes much, much more. So it, is, it has been expanded with some additional models that allow management of the software and services, policies, operating system, applications, virtual machines, containers. And it's still growing to add support for new devices and new technologies, GP, GPU, FPGAs, CXL, Gen Z, or the SmartNIC. One of the most important models defined by the Redfish Forum is the fabric model. It has been developed in collaboration with various uh, industry standardization organization like uh, NVM Express with the NVMe over fabric standard, the storage networking industry association defining the Swordfish standard, which by the way use the same our data schema and JSON data structure concept as Redfish, and also Open Fabric Management working on the Open Fabric uh, Management Framework. Right now, we should also add to this picture the new partner, the CXL Consortium, which is working on fabric management uh, additions to the 3.0 specification and partner with DMTF to build the corresponding Redfish management model. The uh, fabric model can be used to manage multiple fabric technologies, starting with mature SaaS or Ethernet with RDMA support through the PCIe till the newest technologies like CXL or Gen Z. Sorry. So the fabric model allows management of the physical topology with the switches, fabric adapters, and fabric ports, as well as the logical connection established through the fabric with zones, endpoints, address pools, and uh, connections. So on this diagram, you can see the example of the Redfish model for the Gen Z fabric. As you see, the, the Fabric Gen Z defines two endpoints. One, initiator endpoints, which represent the system connected to the fabric. And another one called target, which represents the Gen Z chassis with all its resources. Gen Z also defined the one zone where both endpoints belong to. And this means that the traffic is routable between the initiator and target endpoints. In other words, the system one can establish the connection through the fabric to the Gen Z system to utilize chunk-free uh, memory resource. Of course, we can expose other memory resources from the Gen Z chassis by associating them with the target endpoints or to cre by creation the new endpoints which we belong to the, to the same zone one. From the physical topology perspective, as you see on the diagram, the system one has connection to the fabric switches through the fabric adapter and ports. From another side, this is similar story, the Gen Z chassis is able to connect through the fabric adapter to the and fabric adapter ports to the switches. And with the proper configuration of the switch, the system will have physical connection to the Gen Z chassis, allowing usage of the resources exposed on this, uh, within this chassis. One of the most exciting and important uh, new technologies uh, nowadays is the SmartNIC. So the developed and offers by many hardware vendors concept of integration of network function with the computation resource opens the wide portfolio of use cases in various ecosystems to manage, to mention just the compute cloud or the enterprise solution. So the compute Capability of the SmartNIC can range from the dedicated ASIC through the programmable FPGA 
to the full computer system or the silicon system on chip uh, uh, silicon. So the compute capability is fully controlled by the end user, which may offload various workloads or fun software function from the host processor to the smartnik. It could be the encryption, it could be compression, it could be uh, fabric connection uh, termination, uh, leaving some more resources for other software running on the on the host uh, host uh, CPU. So yet another, as we called it, bubble diagram showing the model, Redfish model of the smartnik. There is a chassis container card one which contains the network functionality, network, single network adapter, one network device function, and one network port. The SOC system is a representation of the embedded capability, compute capability of the SmartNIC, uh, and allow offload of the software functions to, to the SmartNIC. Don't be confused by the SOC name because this is just the name used by this system and, and in fact, you can see here the entire computer system model with the processors, memory, storage, BIOS, everything. And also the chassis container card one can contain other resources that are produced by the SmartNIC. So for example, if the end user offload the fabric termination capability to the capability to the uh, to the smartnik then we may see here the pci functions that are representation of the remote resources accessible to the fabric and uh, which are available to the computer system cs1 which is the host processor host system uh, utilizing the smartnik and the remoteness of these resources is hidden from the operating system and application running on the host uh, computer system. As I mentioned, uh, Redfish has been introduced as the mainly the infrastructure management standard, but through years of the development, it has been expanded with additional functionality not related to the uh, or not fully related to the infrastructure, physical infrastructure management. One of the, one of the perfect example is the management model developed uh, in collaboration with Open Group's Open Process Automation Forum. This model allows management of the software running on the computer system, operating system with operating system metrics, uh, application containers with the container, container images. Another example is the policy management. So ability to define and execute a policy with the policy control loops with the sensors and the control function. This model can be used to implement the power uh, policy with the power sensor and power capping uh, control or the temperature, po temperature policy with the temperature sensor and the fan speed control. So, Redfish has been introduced years ago, but is still evolving. And the direction in which it evolves will depend on you. On if you were able to answer the question about the, any other capability related to Redfish that can be added to the open stack releases. The answering uh, how, how you can use the policy management or operating system containers applications management will be very, very important uh, and useful for the Redfish Forum. Of course, also the general Redfish feedback also will be very important and will influence the direction in which the Redfish standard will evolve. If you are related, interested in the infrastructure and uh, manageability uh, topics, then we would like you know, to encourage you to see the 
intro to open compute project session, if you, of course, if you didn't attend it in person yesterday, or see tomorrow's uh, presentation uh, related to OpenStack uh, uh, cloud building with the OCP, OCP platform. And at the end, a few words about where you can find more information about Redfish standard with the specification, schema definition, uh, models, tools, training materials, how you can participate in the public discussion related to the fabric standard and fabric standard use cases, Redfish standard use cases, and also finally how you can join Redfish forum to work on the future standard, Redfish standard extensions. Thank you and vielen Dank. We are at the top of the hour, but if you have any questions, we probably will have time for one or two. Pimon management, John. Uh, uh, there, there was a slide on there about uh, version one point one of the baseline profile with uh, firmware uh, update, um, and when would that be available? Um, right now, the um, the firmware update is part of the um, breakfast, uh release uh, API release already. It's just a matter of, so it's descriptive, right? We've finished the description. It's a push model. It's a uh, push model or pull model. They, they handle both of them. It handles multiple images that you can download the uh, BIOS update and BMC update at the same time. So now we are moving to the prescriptive side, is who's going to prescribe it? OCB is going to prescribe it. It's going to prescribe it in the baseline. It is currently um, um, in a draft. Um, in the server profile, uh, in the, sorry, hardware management profile working group, and as soon as they approve it, then uh, the IC will, will vote on it and it will be, be updated. So um, that, that just means that, that it's been described, someone wants it, right? And now it's a matter of who's the first product to come through the door uh, once version 1.1 is, is approved to say you, should, you have to have it. Uh, the, the, the reason that um, um, OCP has done that is so they can get everyone to move in tandem that when, when firmware update is supported across the board. So there, there are currently implementations of Redfish that um, already support firmware update, right? This is just means that within a prescriptive power like OCP that they say you have to do it, right? You, you cannot uh, uh, contribute a, a platform without, without firmware update on it. All right, no more questions? Good, we're done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.